How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel and here we are again, story time. And I just gotta give a uh, little bit of clarification or I guess a shout out to everybody who thought that the last time I was talking about my, uh, my, my first, let's say, serious girlfriend Chelsea, they thought that that was it, that that was a one and done. To which I say nay, <laughs> this is a... Uh, this is a very long tale broken up into five parts, each part consisting of multiple stories of my romantic relationships that sort of formed or helped form the man I am today and my uh, ultimate outlook on relationships with other human beings, love, this, that, and the other thing. So I'm just going to get right into it. Talking about this time, uh, gotcha with the title. <laughs> there is nobody put into the friend zone. But as I mentioned in the last entry, talking about Chelsea, when we came together, so did an incredible group of people, young adults. I don't even know if I can say that. Teenagers when it all started. Maybe we were young adults when it ended. But it was very cool because... There was always four guys and four girls. There was myself uh, on one side and Chelsea on the other with me having three of my close friends at the time and her with the same. And it was just so cool to have that happen when Chelsea and I started well, dating, for lack of a better term, uh, to have this really close-knit group of people. Um, we And for the most part as well, we all went to the same school, which was really cool. I have these very fond memories of us hanging out in the library uh, because, you know, we were very cool and uh, <laughs> just having really good times, laughing, joking, creating those like nice core memories of our of our youth, I guess. And uh, of course, that was just in school. There was the um, odd man out on our side who didn't go to our school with us, but in the evenings and on the weekends that that would be rectified and we would all be together and this is the kind of these are the kind of friendships that you never forget now sadly not a lot of them are still upheld on either side although i i would argue that perhaps the guys to this day still remain the closest that's neither here nor there because it's all about what was going on back then and i'm here at um the promenade 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 sounds fancier. In Lake Bonavista, which is a community in Calgary, and Chelsea used to uh, live in this area when we were together, so lots of time was spent here, and there are a lot of amazing memories uh, spent on the other side of the fence that's just in front of Lucky. I can't get in there anymore. Uh, I no longer know anybody who lives here. It is a private lake. But man, there were some good times going in there. Uh, during the summers, swimming in the lake. If you're not, if you're not familiar with the lake, it's just, a, it's just a community lake, so it's nothing crazy, but there is an island in the middle of the lake that you can either swim or boat to, me being me and not uh, <clears throat> getting into dirt, dirty Alberta lakes. I would, uh, I would go out there. You could, you could rent a paddle boat. You can get a canoe. I remember getting a canoe specifically in Chelsea and I going out there probably multiple times. I obviously have one, one summer solidified in my head where I was on that island with my buddies and a, a couple of the girls as well, and just good times, right? And then that, I mean, that's, a lot of that was in this neighborhood. That's why I'm here, because then on the, on, you know, like I mentioned on the evenings and the weekends when we'd be together, we'd just be going over to the, what was a Max then, they're all Circle Ks now, and getting Slurpees and hanging out at the, at the parks, um, and just... I don't even know now. My old man brain wants to be like, oh, we're being scallywags and we're being rambunctious, but... You know, it was just, uh, I guess at the end of the day, it was kids being kids. And we were all, I don't know, we were all just having such a good time. I mean, I can only speak from my personal experience and my memory of those moments. And again, Chelsea is the one that is obviously the oldest and I am the furthest away from now in my life. So my memory could be failing me on certain aspects of all of this. But it was that it was that crew, that motley crew of people that are together. Um, and we've got these great memories of all piling into my buddies. Well, first his car, all eight of us at one point piling into a, was it a Camaro? I know there was a laser in there at some point as well. One of the girls in the trunk and the hatch and just, just crazy kid stuff, right? He even had a pickup truck at one point. We would all pile into that. It was one of those old 
trucks that just just a single cab bench style seat i remember that i don't think that was all eight of us maybe it was all crammed in there as much as we can with one of the girls laying across everybody else's lap and you know where we were going and this is something that never changes we went down to a mcdonald's <laughs> we would go through the drive through or we would get out and we'd go inside and we'd order we'd order some food and we'd sit down and it's just i i have i don't have them anymore but there were photographs that were taken and just smiles on everybody's faces. Uh, it's not it's not whole much like, oh, you don't know what you're in for. Or Life's going to take a turn and it's going to get harder. And But those were the good old days. You know, when people say that, you don't know them when you're in them. And I don't think you only get one set of good old days. But man, were those some good ones for sure. And it was just my relationship with Chelsea that sort of, I felt sparked this very interesting dynamic with everybody and yeah there were a couple other um of the guys and the girls that sort of paired up and dated here and there fleetingly nothing too serious or nearly as long as chelsea and i were together um but the nice thing about all of it was is that when those other relationships sort of ended after some you know typical teenage ickiness or nastiness i think by and large Everybody still got along and we're still quite friendly with each other. Um, which I guess that speaks volumes to our actual friendship and the strength that everybody had with everybody else. And I just, again, it's just nice to come down to this area and reminisce. I mean, I guess that's one of the benefits of my van life primarily being in the city that I grew up in. I am surrounded by these memories and it's also interesting that I'm at this point in my life now where I can do that and it is a nice happy memory because of course there would have been a there would have been a time when a lot of these memories would have seemed like nightmares to me or things I would have wanted to forget but when you're in the thick of it and you're just so in love you don't know any better you just focus on day-to-day -day stuff and um and I was having a great time right I was having a really good time with this girl I was very much in love or maybe no, I can't even I can't even second guess myself. I was very much in love. This was this was exactly that. And that's one thing I can pride myself on is I've never really second guessed myself on whether or not I've been in love. And with Chelsea, it was just so easy. It was just so almost automatic. And how could it even be that when she was my first serious relationship, right? But it's just like Oh, it's just, it, when you're in it, it's such a nice feeling. And that's probably why I'm thankful that now, years on, I can, I can think about this stuff and still have a fondness for it. Um, I mean, if we're getting, on, getting honest, I get, this was also when I started probably becoming too full of myself and assuming that relationships after a certain point just stick without any sort of work. I mean, you know, I'm not going to get carried away in the sense of what was ultimately our downfall, but there's still an idea that even as a young man, for me, that was it. I was going to be with Chelsea for the rest of my life. And that might be a double-edged sword because, well, that's a nice thought on one hand if you're no longer putting in any sort of work and you just sort of think that it's all going to be automatic. You're sort of setting yourself up to fail, potentially. Not knowing it at the time, of course, but that's what makes relationships... Relationships, right? And I guess I'm just happy, more than anything now, that there are still some of those friends that I talk to and I will always be able to look back and remember just how happy we made each other, how much we would make each other laugh, how much we would miss each other when we weren't together. And just when the whole crew was together, being our silly selves, it was the best time to be alive. And I'm sure lots of people can relate to that, whether or not it's through a romantic relationship or a friendship or just just even on your own. We get so far away from certain things that for the longest time we thought poorly of after they ended. 
I'm happy that I can get to this point and, and it still makes me smile. Taking the time to reflect on things like that, I think is uh, maybe not important, but valuable perhaps, depending on how you process everything. And it really was an amazing relationship to start with. Because, I mean, obviously Chelsea's not around anymore. And the next thing that was to come, of course, was going to be one of the hardest lessons that young Matthew would have to learn. And it definitely wouldn't be something that he would apply immediately. But we will save that for the next one. Thank you for watching. Until then, go out there, be happy, be creative, be yourselves. Most importantly, be positive. And remember, only dead fish go with the flow.